me just start off by showing you the inside of the box. Now this is the international edition. You'll have the board and then you have this plastic film and everything has its compartment and everything sits nicely from the, all the cards to the paintings, the easels and then underneath the easels are all the tiles. Beautiful. How every game should be. Now depending on the version of pastiche you buy will determine whether or not you get this this big board to display all the paint colour cards on. So what you see here may not be in the mini version of pastiche but it doesn't matter because it doesn't change anything, it doesn't affect the gameplay, it's just a nice thing to look at. Next to this you'll have this big pile of paintings to commission. Okay, You'll place out five of these next to the board or next to the paints. This is a bank or a general pool where players can complete any of these paintings or exchange paintings with the bank here. You'll also put in the middle of the table this triple hex tile. This is where players will be mixing their paints together to get the colours from the thingy. Easel. No, it's not an easel. Each player will receive two easels and they will also take two paintings from the pile of paintings that can be commissioned. They'll also receive two tiles which they'll keep secretly hidden in front of them that they can look at whenever they want. They'll also receive four colour cards, a green, a brown, an orange and a violet and they're all one point each. And again these are kept secret in the hand. Players will also each get a reference card like this which will tell you what colours will make what colours and, and they explain the rules on how players take their turns. You give one of the players the start player card and then away you go. On a player's turn the first thing they have to do is they have to mix some colours. Now you have your two tiles at the beginning of the game and what you'll be doing is adding them to this um, collection of hexes. And what you can do is you can do one of two things. You can either take the primary colour which is in the middle of the tile, so in this case you could take a yellow or a blue, or on the other tile just a yellow. Um, or you can mix the colours together. So for example, if I did this, I would be mixing three colours and I'd get three colours. I'd get a blue and a yellow which makes a green, you check your reference card. you got the blue, yellow and red which makes a brown and you've got a red and a red which doesn't make anything. But the other thing that it can do is if you leave that there, those two reds, and you put three reds together, you can actually make a primary colour. And primary colours are very hard to get hold of. The only way to get hold of them is by mixing, uh, taking the colour in the middle. So you don't want to leave uh, opportunities like that in the open unless you're willing to push your luck. But in that case, if I move it around, you'll see that the red and the yellow will make an orange, the yellow red and blue make a brown and the blue and the red will make a violet. I will receive those cards and add them to my hand. So now with my cards in my hand I'll go to the next part of the game where I can actually finish paintings. Now to finish a painting you'll need all the colours that it says on the painting. So for this painting I only require a bisque and a black and if I complete it it will give me eight points. Now you see this little five in brackets underneath. If I was to have two paintings at the end of the game by the same painter, I'd get that bonus five points. And on this painting here, you can see, to finish this one, you need a violet, a green, a bisque, and an orange. And that would, too, give me eight points. All the paintings do have different values up to about 15 points. So, if I wanted to, and if I could, if I had the colours, I could finish a painting and score some points. The other things I can do is I can trade my cards with other players. So I could say, I, I need a brown. Is anyone interested in an orange or a violet? And players may go, oh, okay, yeah, fine. And you can negotiate to your heart's content with the other players. The other players might demand, uh, oh, send me two violets and I'll give you a brown. And you might go, okay, yeah, fine, okay, I'll give you two violets, you give me a brown. So you can trade with other players. You can also trade with the bank you can trade three colours the same with the bank to get any colour you want, either a secondary or a tertiary. The only colours you cannot trade for are greys, because you need to make them with a black and a white, a bisque, which you need to make with a brown and a yellow, and any of the primary colours you cannot trade. Okay, so you can trade those three for, let's say, a scarlet. 
for a black. And later on I could trade the black for uh, with a white and then trade the black and the white together for a grey. Okay. Now one slight addition to that rule is that if you have a primary colour, a blue, a red or a yellow, you can trade one of these for another colour, but you'll have to sacrifice a second card. So I'd have to get rid of my violet and blue to change it to a red or a yellow, depending on what primary colour I needed. Another thing you can do is you can trade one of your paintings on your easel with one of the ones in the bank, because there might be one which has the same artist as one of the paintings that you have in front of you and so you might want to guard it so no one else can complete it because the ones on the bank can be completed by anyone so you can you don't have to do the ones in front of you you can complete any of the ones from the bank as well at the end of the turn when you've traded and you've painted as much as you can possibly do or want to do you then go to the end of the phase where you will look at your card hand size if it's more than eight you'll need to discard down to eight and then to show that your turn is over, you will draw another tile to replace the tile that you used at the beginning of your turn. Just a note of warning, this sack does not come, this game does not come with this sack, so um, you might have to invest in a little sack. Then play moves to the next player, and the next player will do the same thing. They will start by mixing colours, either taking the primary colour in the middle of the tile that they place, or taking the colours that they mix around the edge and this is going to be getting bigger and bigger as the game goes on and there's going to be more different ways that you can get different colours that you want and there might be ways to get more colours than any other player like there you will get four colours if you use the mixing and then you go into the trading you're going to the painting and then you're going to the cleanup which is discarding down to eight and then replacing your tile with a new tile the game will keep going until one of the players hits one of the goals. If it's a four player game, uh, when a player has 35 points worth of points in front of them, not included in the brackets, the game will end. In a three player game, it'll be 40, and in a two player game, it'll be 45. Once that's done, you total up all your scores. You'll total up all your scores from your paintings, you'll add on any additional ones from um, the same artist, so the little bonus points. You will also then add up any cards that you have in your hand. The numbers there are points. And the player with the most points is the winner of the game. It's really as simple as that. Now for those of us who just joined, uh, the winner for the Name the Component part is Mrs. Green Gromberg of 72 Acacia Road. Yes, this is not an easel, this is a painter's palette where they mix their colours. Now, Pastiche, my international edition, is a board game that artists and mathematicians will probably picture in their collections. I like this game, okay? This is a mathematical game. If you take away all the artwork and you just look at the bare components of what it is, it is a mathy game, much like Splendor. Um, but it, it, it is, spoiler alert, it is math. Okay, the cards you've got in your hands have got points on them. Okay, at the end of the day, you're banking those points by completing pictures which have the same value as the paints that are required to, to paint them. And the bonus is that if you do paintings by the same artist, you'll get bonus points on top of that. So it is a manipulation of your how you uh, put your your mix of colours or what colours you take to get most points into your hands, which are most effective for finishing certain paintings. And it's like that. Uh, my wife really loves this game. Um, I think she likes this game more than Splendor, although I would say Splendor is the better of the two due to the fact that it is everyone starts the same but can go in different patterns, whereas in this that everyone starts the same and can kind of go in different patterns. And then there's the luck element of um, if another painting turns up with the same artist. Components are beautiful as you've seen. Um, this is the international edition. There is a petit, petit pastiche. Picture, if you can, a smaller version without so many components, thinner card quality. But I mean, the card quality on this is, is fantastically thick. Nice thick tiles. And these nice thick, uh, 
you know, we've played this game a good 30 odd times and the game still looks brand new straight out of the box. All I can say is, it, this is an enjoyable game. Um, it, it's, it's a little complex to explain to people at the beginning the mixing of colours, but after a while it kind of feels good. Another little complaint I have about the game is it's not balanced that well, I feel. He says, sipping his cappuccino. There was one time we taught this to a, a, a couple of friends, and one friend couldn't grasp the idea of why they were mixing paints. They were just mixing paints and putting cards in their hand, and then discarding cards because they had to. And it wasn't until everyone had two paintings in front of them, they said, well, how do you do that then? And so he explained. And then that person went on to win the game. Which I felt was a bit unjust because they were technically behind. They had hands full of cards but no paintings finished, whereas other players had paintings finished. But they, they, it was very close. It was equal between two players. The scores, but it was the, 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 the what's it called? The cut thing? No. Oh, what's it called? Oh, storm the brain. Jeez. Um. But you know the 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 the, the showdown when two people have the final final scores and the person that had struggled at the beginning of the game actually won on that factor that they um, had more paintings or whatever it was. The equaliser, that's an Edward Wood word. Mm. But th this game is good. Um, as I said, if you're an art buff, there's lots of lovely paintings on here with the information of you know when they were painted, where they're being stored at the present time of printing of the game, because obviously these paintings will probably move around sometime in the future. Um, and you know, there's 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 enough variety of their play over and over again. But even though the game is just the same thing over and over again, like Splendor, where it's just the same thing over and over again. But the the fun is had by the challenge, you know, by having a player that you play against and it is a race to get those points and win the game which is what my wife likes doing she likes crushing me at this game um, so I need to really bucker up my um, my strategy and start crushing her at this game so um, that's pastiche pastiche pretty good game I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it number one because my wife likes it and number two I kind of like it as well it's 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 one of those games you gotta put uh, classical music to while you're playing. Yeah? You gotta have some Brahms or some Holst in the background just playing tranquilly and drink your cup of coffee. No. Whatever, a glass of wine, if you know. And um, enjoy! It is fun. That, what 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 did you think the question was? Well, uh, it's, real. It, <laughs> hey, we're we're nothing if we are not flexible. This is Let's, a fly by the seat of your pants operation, and we're going with the flow. Okay. Well, I'm really embarrassed because I for whatever I'm reason I'm embarrassed they, too. 
I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm so embarrassed. I, I just, I don't even know if I can go on right now. <laughs> but the show must go on, so we can't All eject right. him. Right. We Robert, have to push, push that push button. Through. Eject him. Eject him. So here's Get the deal. Him. It's another game that I'm excited about getting. All right. Okay. Another game and you're excited about. That I am going to get. Okay. He's drawn okay. a picture of Odie 